we give God praise and we bless him. Can we stand to our feet and give the Lord praise on tonight? He's worthy to be praised and adored. I bless him on tonight for that good nap I took between services. Because I don't know about y'all. I don't know nothing about no night service no more. I don't know nothing about this, but I bless the Lord. And I give him praise on tonight because he's worthy. We know that the Lord moved in this place on this morning. And we expect nothing less in this place on tonight. We're going to pray and we're going to watch the Lord move in this house on tonight. I don't care what it is that you need in this place. I believe that if you pull on God on tonight, if we pull on him together, that God is going to rush into this place on tonight. And his glory is going to be revealed that he's going to touch us he's going to deliver and he's going to set free in this place tonight I didn't come out for nothing this morning this evening but I came to give him praise I came to watch him do some great things in this place on tonight I don't know about you but I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready in this place on tonight let's pray together and watch God move in this house Father, we give you praise and we glorify you. We bless your holy name in this house on tonight, Father. We come for no other reason but to give your name praise and glory. So we give you free course in this place to walk through. We give you free course in this place to touch. We give you free course in this place to deliver. Throw your weight around a little bit, Father, in the middle of our hallelujah and in the middle of our thank you, Jesus. Father, move. Deliver, speak, strengthen, and restore in this place on tonight, Father. As we give your name praise and as we glorify you, Father, we open the door wide for you to move. We open the door wide for you to rush in on tonight. Rush in, Holy Ghost, in every area of our lives tonight. We give you free cause to demonstrate. We give you free cause to touch in this place on tonight, God. Now we ask that you speak through the man of God, Pastor Nelson, on tonight. Father, we know that you had a word this morning, but we ask that you do it again. Yes, yes, yes. Do it again on tonight. Speak a word. One word that will bless many. Speak one word that will heal. Speak one word that will refresh. Speak one word, hallelujah, that will take us into a deeper depth of your glory on tonight. Bless the man of God as he makes his way here. Bless Pastor Nelson. We pull on the word. Yes, yes, that sits down on the inside of him. We pull on the oil that sits down on the inside of him. Father, have your way and let your will be done all over this house tonight. Have your way and walk through this place on tonight and we'll give you praise. Bless our great pastor. Pastor Merritt, pour into him. Fill him up, strengthen him, restore him as the word goes forth on tonight, Father, and use this great choir for your glory. Sing a word through them, Father, that will heal somebody. Sing a word that will encourage somebody on tonight. Use the musicians on tonight, Father. Play in the right key, shot that will touch somebody's life and make them better on tonight. We give you praise. We give you all a touch from the pulpit. Yes, to the parking lot and have your way. Touch in this place on tonight. And we'll bless you with thank you. That ministry is easy. Yes, that ministry is easy. That ministry is easy to release and easy to receive in this place on tonight, Father. Have your way and get glory. Let our testimony be greater, greater, greater before we exit. Let our testimony be that it's still all right before we exit this place. And we'll give you praise. We'll give you honor. And we'll give you glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. It's in Jesus' name that we glorify you. It's in Jesus' name that we honor you. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. And all together we say, Amen. amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Anybody come to bless his name? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We are thankful unto him and we've come to praise his name. Is it all right this tonight? Come on, put your hands together like this. Come on. It's still throwback Sunday, y'all. Hallelujah. Come on, we put our clothes back on to come and give God a praise. Come on, put those hands together. Hallelujah.
worthy. Somebody just tell somebody else he's worthy. Good evening and God bless you and welcome to the Life Church broadcast for our Throwback Sunday. 
with services emanating from the main sanctuary of the Life Church, conveniently located at 3243 Stone Road in the heart of Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. On behalf of our founder and senior pastor, Dr. Terrence A. Merritt, and all of us here at the Life Church, your Christian friends, would like to welcome you to the online streaming broadcast. We invite you to share, to like, and to comment. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now to take us further in tonight's throwback broadcast, welcome the melodious sounds of the Life Church Choir singing, I've Come to Give You Life.
Anybody got joy tonight? Anybody got joy tonight? Come on, put your hands together and give God praise in this sanctuary. Thank the Lord for joy. I said, thank the Lord for joy. Hallelujah. I've got joy. I've got joy. Somebody said, and this joy I have. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. I am grateful for joy. I've got joy when things are well, and I've got joy when things are not well. I've got joy. The Lord is my joy, and I give him praise on tonight. We bless him. Come on, before you take your seat, put your hands together and give God glory. We bless him tonight, and we give him praise for the opportunity to gather on a Sunday night. We haven't been in church on a Sunday night, and I don't even remember when but we're here tonight and one thing about folk who come to church on sunday night they don't need a lot of extra look at your neighbor said i just came to have church i just this this is not the showy crowd this is the crowd that comes to have church i've come to bless his wonderful name today has been throwback sunday all day long that means we are honoring old school church I'm grateful for the old time way. I said, I'm grateful for the old time way. I told you this morning, this is about the time in the service that somebody would open up the testimony service. And Sunday night was a good time for testimony service. Sunday morning, they cut us off, but Sunday night, they let it go on a little while. So if you didn't get your chance to sing your song on Sunday morning, all you had to do was come back on Sunday night. And something about the saints, all we needed was somebody to get it started. If somebody got it started, we just jump right in. And then sometimes the person who got it started, they stopped the song. And somebody on the other side still heard it singing in their soul. And then somebody over there would pick it up. And then somebody over there would pick it up. And before you know it, there was fire burning all in the house of the Lord. Come on, tell somebody I came to have church. We are out here tonight and we're blessed. Amen. Superintendent Randall is here. His beautiful wife is also here. First Lady Randall, everybody stand on your feet. First Lady Randall, music department getting ready to lead us in old school church. Come on, if you don't know the songs, just clap. They're not difficult songs. You can learn them. It doesn't take just a couple times here that you know exactly what to say. Come on, receive First Lady Tracy Randall as she lead us in worship and praise on tonight. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody, praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, everybody in here, praise the Lord. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Come on, praise him. Give him the glory. I, I have a sneaking suspicion that we came to praise the Lord tonight. That we came to have church. Hallelujah. Superintendent Nelson, great to see you. Thank you, Pastor. Let's go. Come on, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. We don't need a lot of preliminaries. He's worthy. Come on, put your hands together. And let's bless the Lord tonight. Bless that wonderful name.
magnify. Yes, he is. I know he's a good yes, God. He yes, he is. 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 trouble oh yes yes he yes he is he's a real he's a real good a real good God at this time we're gonna have to close testimony service out but if you didn't get a chance to sing your song or testify this is your time we can all stand and testify in one accord y'all don't have y'all not remember old church they tell us to stand and we'd all stand and testify and you have folk all over the church just standing like they were talking and nobody was talking but them. But they testify of God's goodness. I'm grateful tonight to be saved and sanctified, baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I do speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Hallelujah. I'm on my way to heaven and I'm so glad. I'm grateful tonight and we're giving praise. Come on, put your hands together one more time. Before you take your seat, God bless you tonight. We give God glory. One thing about the old churches, they didn't mind praising. They didn't mind praising the Lord and they didn't mind praising him and wasn't watching the clock. And before you know it, it doesn't tell how long we've been in service. Amen. We dance and then we take a little break and then we dance a little bit more. We were grateful for the goodness of God and we didn't mind telling the Lord, thank you. Looking back over it, we didn't have much then. Not compared to what all we have now. But one thing we did have, we had the joy of the Lord. One thing we did have, we had a praise. Hallelujah. It's a, it's a horrible thing to hold, have a whole lot of stuff and don't have a whole lot of praise. I think your praise ought to match how good it's been to you. Look at your neighbor said, he's been too good for me not to give him glory. He's been too good for me not to praise him. I would sit down and close my mouth, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus, 
and all that he's done for me my soul cry out I came to be quiet tonight but I messed around and started thinking about the goodness of Jesus I said I'm going to dance tonight but I started thinking about the goodness of Jesus and if you stop thinking about the goodness of Jesus your hands will start clapping your body will start rocking your feet will start stumping when you start thinking about how good God's been to you we bless you tonight and we glorify him God bless you tonight God bless you to all of you that are in the sanctuary we give God praise for you who gather tonight to glorify God you who are worshiping with us online our online community all of our lifers who are streaming on tonight our guests and our visitors who are streaming for this Sunday night throwback service amen we're looking forward to what God's going to do in this place because there is a preacher in this there's a preacher in this house I said there is a preacher in this house he blessed us so this Sunday this morning he blessed us in this house I believe I'm gonna press on I said I believe I'm gonna press I'm gonna press on he told us how to forget he said you gotta just jump over it and keep going <laughs> uh, 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 you gotta not let it stop you but he said jump over it uh, mm, and keep going because the prize is where it's before me it's in front of me so if I get stuck in a bad situation I'm going to miss what's in front of me so the preacher said this morning jump over it and keep going look at your neighbor said I'm going to leave I'm going to press on I bless the Lord for the preacher here tonight he's going to bless us and I'm looking with great anticipation of what God is going to say to us through him on tonight. I want you to do, amen, join us tonight as we, amen, bless the Lord in giving. I want you to prepare to give on tonight. Amen. I know we've been giving all day, but that's all right. God's been blessing all, all day. I want to encourage all of you who can, get a seed of at least $25. Some of us will do more, but you who can, get a seed of at least $25. You who are streaming, our visitors, I invite you to join us in giving uh join us in praise but join us in giving this is good ground it's good ground not because the preacher says it's good it's good ground because it's got history and it's got a history of producing miracles come out of this of this ground jobs and promotions and opportunities and doors and houses and cars and god blesses out of this out of this ground he blesses in healing he blesses amen not just physical healing but emotional healing because everybody doesn't need another job everybody don't need another check some folk not in financial trouble and so if we try to say giving is only for folk who got a financial need we're gonna miss so much paul said it's bigger than that i said paul said it's bigger than that paul said our seed has the potential to release favor in our life and it will move in whatever area of insufficiency and I believe everybody in this house got an area of insufficiency and your insufficiency may not be in your bank account but you got an area of insufficiency maybe it's with your children maybe maybe it's in your body maybe it's in your mind maybe it's in your peace but wherever your area of insufficiency is that Paul said our grace, our, our offering, our seed has the potential to release grace that will cause God's sufficiency to move in the area of our insufficiency. So as you release your seed on tonight, expect God to cause your insufficiency to become sufficient. His grace uh, is sufficient. Uh, that area is insufficient, but his grace is sufficient so as we're preparing on tonight getting that seed together there's several ways that you can give you who are online you who are in the house you can go to the website and give www.lifechurchofatlanta.org you can give via cash app that cash app address is life church atlanta again life church atlanta you can give via givelify just by locating life church located at 3243 stone road southwest atlanta or you can even text and give by texting life text the number to give to the number 71441 
You can give old school giving. You can give via cash and check. Just put it in your envelope. If you're giving electronically, there's no need to complete an envelope because the, your electronic giving will give us the information that we need so that you get credit for your giving. And so tonight, even if you have a credit or debit card and you need the assistance of our finance team, they're already positioned and ready to assist you. Just stay where you are. Just lift your hand and just notating to them that you need assistance and they will, amen, come to you and serve you even in your seat. But whichever area, whichever option that you choose to give tonight, the only thing you need to make sure is that you do give and you release the seed. We are preparing all over this house to sow into the ground of ministry, into the ground of Life Church on tonight. You that are online are joining us in giving. Come on, somebody's in the comment section said, I'm sowing. That's right. Somebody's in the comment section. Seed sown. Amen. This is worship. This is worship. This is worship. Father, we give you praise and we thank you for the privilege of giving. We thank you that you've given us something to give. We thank you because you've not left us empty. And so now out of that which we have, we now give back to you. We sow. We sow with anticipation knowing that there is something coming back. We thank you for what is being produced by the seed we sow. For the opportunities that are being produced by blessings that are in front of us because of the seed that we sow. You promise the sower that you would always provide them with seed. So even as we continue to sow, we thank you. We'll continually have seed. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we give him praise. God bless you as we're giving all over the house tonight. for the word of God. Again, we've got a preacher in the house, the pastor, amen, Brian Nelson, all the way from Houston, Texas. Yes, Jericho City. He's a singer. He is a writer. Amen. The husband, amen, and a father. And he's in this house on the night. Amen. He can preach and he can sing. 
I grew up with his mother, amen. We all know her, amen, the doc, Dr. Betty Nelson. The songbird of the Church of God in Christ, and we, amen, honor God for what they have placed, her and Bishop have placed in this, amen, preacher on the night, and we set ourselves, amen, position to receive whatever God is going to say through him. I'm going to ask you, amen, if you do again, amen, when he come, if you just rest to your feet and stand and honor the gift of God and the man of God, and whatever he says to do, do that. Before they come, amen, our music ministry is going to come again with a sermonic selection. And the next voice you will hear will be the Pastor Brian Nelson. God bless you. Just because God said it, that's enough. Because God spoke it, why shouldn't my heart believe? God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Shall he 
Come on, shout praise the Lord, everybody. Will you do me a favor tonight and look somebody in the face and say, neighbor, God said it, and that's enough for me. Come on, if your neighbor don't start rejoicing, you're talking to the wrong neighbor. Find another neighbor and say, neighbor, if God said it, that's enough for me. Come on, clap your hands and give him glory. We bless the Lord tonight for his goodness. I don't know about you, but my testimony is God's been good to me. And if you don't mind witnessing through your mask, just look across the room and somebody and say, neighbor, God's been good to me. Or oh, they should have got happy for you. You were talking to a selfish neighbor. Find somebody else and say, neighbor, God's been good to me. Come on, if God's really been good to you, come on, open up their mouth and shout glory. Whoa, whoa. Come on, do me a favor and shout all glory. Woo. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The old saints used to say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, come on somebody and say, all he's done for me. Come on, shout my soul. I don't have the right church tonight. Listen, I'm going to the message, but do me a favor, point at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's a miracle in this house. And he's got your name on it. And he's got your name on it. And he's got your name on it. Come on, wave across this room and say, neighbor, there's a miracle in this room. And he's got your name on it. Now clap your hands and give him praise. Yeah. Well, we bless the name of the Lord tonight for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. I don't know about you, but my testimony is I'm still alive. It's by the grace of God. Won't you testify and tell somebody I could have been dead and gone. Listen, if you had COVID over the last 19 months, but you're still here tonight, you ought to not be ashamed. Just wave at somebody and tell them I'm still here. And it's by the grace of God. Whoa. Well, we bless the Lord tonight. We'll go right to the word of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The saints would say, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And there is freedom in this room. We honor the Lord for his presence and his power. And certainly, we honor the Lord tonight uh, for such an auspicious leader, for such a man of excellence. Can we honor the Lord for our pastor tonight? for bringing us together on a Sunday night. Hallelujah. Sunday night ain't play church. You come on Sunday night, you come to get something from God. And so we honor him tonight for his vision of this gathering. And certainly, we honor the Lord tonight for our regional president. Amen. Pastor Randall, we honor the Lord for you. Amen. Amen. The Department of Evangelism and our newly appointed treasurer. Amen. Praise the Lord, Elder Salter. We honor the Lord for you tonight. All of the people of God, listen, I, I, won't, I won't bore you, I won't bore you tonight. John 21 is where we will read from tonight. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Ah, da, 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 da. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Come on, sing with me. With the heart of thanksgiving. Oh, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Come on, lift up your voice. I will. Oh, 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 oh. I will. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will. Everybody. I will bless the old Lord.
oh my soul and all come on with me that is within me everybody bless tonight thank you John 21 when you have the word just say I have the word if you're still looking just say preacher wait John 21 beginning at verse number one you find these words after these things Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias and on this wise showed he himself there were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go fishing. They say unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Listen, do me a favor tonight and help me preach to your neighbor. Repeat after me and say, Neighbor, Trust him one more time. Come on, come on. I need you to put your prophetic voice on. Just look somebody in the face and say, neighbor, I know you've been disappointed. I know you've been brokenhearted. But tell him before you give up, I need you to trust him one more time. Trust him one more time. Be seated. Be seated tonight. Be seated tonight. Be seated. Uh, I begin, I begin this argument. Uh, by admitting and acknowledging to you tonight that the anticipation of humanity and the sovereignty of God are not always the same. I said the anticipation of humanity and the sovereignty of God are not always the same. Pastor and I were having a conversation this afternoon and it is amazing to me how well we shout and dance when we get an answer to the prayer. Yeah, it's amazing how happy we get when prophecy is released on Monday and manifested on Tuesday. But I want you to understand sometimes those circumstances are the anomaly because sometimes the strength of the believer is not in how quickly the prayer can be answered or the prophecy can manifest. But the strength of the believer is in how long you can wait and trust God while you're waiting. I want you to understand that sometimes there's a difference between the outcome I expect and the experience that I have by faith. Understand on a night like tonight while we are shouting and rejoicing and dancing and believing God, it is commonplace for us to leave out of here tonight believing that our bodies are going to be healed, our prayers are going to be answered and manifestation is on the way. It is normal after a night like tonight, I already feel the charge of the Holy Ghost. I, somebody came in here discouraged and already you feel like things are turning in your favor and that's the way it's supposed to happen because of the power of fellowship and praise it is normal to feel encouraged however understand that when you leave out of here tonight there may be a difference in what you expect and what you experience understand it is normal as a believer to expect to be healed and expect to be delivered and expect to be promoted but I got a question for you tonight what do you do when your experience is not what you expected I, I expect it to come out but my experience is I'm still going through I, I expect it to be delivered but my experience is I'm still under bondage I, I expect it to be promoted but I've been looked over time after time question don't be rude talk back to the preacher what do you do when your experience and your expectation 
are not the same. If you're weak in the faith, you will then allow your expectation to be limited and minimized. And I want to challenge you tonight. Your expectation cannot be based upon your experience. You have to have a conviction in God that pervades beyond your experience. Somebody said, even when things are not well with me, I must still confess that God is able. Lord, help me to preach tonight. Uh, understand sometimes not only do we gain confidence in the fellowship of, of the saints and the strength we gain when we come to a service like this, but then there are others of us who are so rigorous in our routines. We uh, tend to develop confidence in our planning and our programming. I, I want to preach to all of the analytical people in the room. You know, all of you uh, T-crossers and i dotters. Uh, uh, sometimes your confidence is not really in your prayer life. Sometimes your confidence is in the fact that you have covered all of the bases. You followed all of the rules. You have honored all of the protocols. But I need to tell you tonight, you can drink eight glasses of water and still be dehydrated. I want you to know you can run two miles a day and still be out of shape. Why? Because God has a way of out operating outside of the power of our planning somebody said if you fail to plan then you plan to fail and while there is legitimate logic to this statement I need you to understand tonight that sometimes there are moments when your planning and God's purpose are juxtaposed there are moments when your planning and God's purpose are not in alignment and it's in those moments that you have to refuse the temptation to throw in the towel that's why Paul said be not weary in well doing he's not just randomly speaking he's saying don't be weary because he knows there are moments regardless of how many tongues you talk in you can find yourself weary on the way I just want to see how many honest believers do I have in the room who will testify I'm the preacher but sometimes God gets on my nerves I, I'm the prayer warrior and sometimes I, I get frustrated some of y'all you don't know how to tell the truth I'm just looking for the real folk in the room who will say preacher I love God but sometimes I don't understand how my enemies can continue to prosper it, may, it puzzles me why I'm going to church every Sunday and still struggling while my neighbor is at the golf course and watching the Falcons lose and watching the Atlanta Hawks be eliminated and, and it looks like that oh, oh I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I apologize. But isn't it, isn't it amazing, isn't it amazing how you can watch other people just kind of meander through life, no real conviction, no real commitment, and it looks like across the yard that they're doing well while you are crossing the T's and going to Bible study. Seems like I can't get a break. Is there anybody in the room will admit that sometimes it seems like God is skipping over me and blessing everybody else? But that's why the psalmist said, fret not thyself because of evildoers I don't want to quote the whole scripture but I just want you to prophetically tell your neighbor something good is on the way to you uh, y'all ain't talking tonight I had a better crowd in Sunday morning service look at your neighbor and tell them something good is on the way I need you to hear me as I press through this introduction there are many of us who try to impose our will on God by the effort we invest in the planning we try to impose our desire on God on, by how long we work and how intense our labor and, and you know that's even leaked over into our praise practices because you look like you've been in one of those services where the prophet told you if you scream loud enough you'll get a blessing or if you run three times around the room they told you you can place a demand on God excuse me ma'am sir theologically that is just not accurate <laughs> because even when you look in the text the Bible says after they fished all night the Bible said after these things Jesus revealed 
revealed himself unto them. I need you to understand every time Jesus shows up in the Bible, it's never because he summons. It's always because he's revealed. I know somebody told you, you can place a demand on God, but can I tell you, you ain't holy enough to place a demand on God. You, you ain't sanctified enough to place a demand on God. And so whenever God comes in the room, you know it's not because of your righteousness. It's just because of his holiness. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to make sure I got my own praise with me because uh, some of y'all are tired tonight, but I need you, I need you to remember the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16 that man plans his way, but it is God who orders his steps. I, I want you to know there will be seasons in your life when you can make the dean's list, get your degree in four years. You, you can do all of the things you ought to do and still find your life cemented up against the wall you you can meet every prayer meeting you can be the number one alto and the best soprano Atlanta has ever seen and still find yourself under pressure you can be faithful to God in word and deed and still find yourself in a battle all I'm trying to show you tonight is that you cannot impose your your desire on God by how much effort you impose because if you're not careful you will discover that sometimes it's the people who come to church whenever they want that seem like they're getting the blessing and those of us who are being faithful seem like we came by a miracle but I came through Atlanta on my way back to Texas to tell somebody if you hang on the end there the Holy Ghost told me to tell somebody God's about to reward the righteous he, he's about to fail of the faithful I'm almost where I'm almost where I need to be please be seated I, I, I think I like y'all I understand understand we are taught in our charismatic experience we're taught to have faith undaunting and unwavering we aren't we taught that we're taught to hold on to God uh, we, we've been taught to have confidence and we've been taught never to cast it away why because it has great exchange of faith uh, with God for the desire of our heart but I, I need you to understand when I tell you tonight uh, that I need you to trust God I, I'm the preacher that's going to be very honest with you about the experience and I want you to know that trusting God will sometimes have you feeling like you are losing your mind. I want you to understand something. When you make up in your mind to trust God, understand you're going to be mean and moody. Sometimes you're going to want to cuss people out. I, I know y'all ain't ready for this Sunday night sermon, but I'm giving you the reality of the experience. See, because when you really start trusting God, you are then in a battle between your faith and your flesh. While your faith is trying to trust God but my flesh is frustrated and what you don't understand is that sometimes God has to stretch your flesh in order to strengthen your faith understand something so when you're going through the process of becoming what God had called you to be it's going to be dark it's going to be lonely you're going to be miserable look how ain't nobody want to say amen to the preacher because you want me to lie to you and tell you after you dance tonight it's going to be easy no let me tell you after you dance tonight all hell is going to break loose but I came by to tell you if you remain faithful God help me help me help me to preach I understand something now many of us would like to believe that because I have a relationship with God in prayer and I'm a student of the Holy Scriptures and because I'm purposeful in my lifestyle that's pleasing to God uh, that I'm not going to have to go through trials and challenges but but I need you to hear me uh, that's just not how faith works uh, trusting God will have you believing that you are losing your mind why because 
because there will always be an ongoing battle, hear me, between what I believe and what I bear. I'm believing God for a miracle, but I'm bearing a burden. I'm, I'm believing God for provision, but, but I'm bearing poverty and struggle. Who in the room tonight will admit preacher? Sometimes the battle of my life is holding on to what I believe while I'm dealing with what I'm going through. It would be easy to trust God if I didn't have all of these variables fighting against my conviction. But who wants to tell the truth? That's the reason why we ought to be excited about coming back into the church. How many of you admit it will admit it's been warfare over the last 19 months because I had to learn how to have an experience through the television screen. I didn't have no neighbor to touch so I had to go and get my kids dolls and sit them on the couch next to me so I could have a neighbor to touch. I had to move the coffee table so I could have praise break space because I was used to being in an environment where I can draw where I can draw some enemy from your I can draw some energy from your experience that's why there is so much validity in coming back to church and, and you got to learn how uh, you don't have to explain spiritual practices to carnal people carnal people I don't know why you're spending so much time in that church child you better stay at home you may come up with COVID well you can get COVID in Walmart the stadium the shopping mall and look I need you to understand tonight if I'm going to be covered anywhere it's going to be in the house of the Lord I told you this morning that you're going to have to press why are you going to have to press because there is an enemy of God in Georgia that does not want to see revival take place see many of you are warring just for your little family but I need you to know tonight this is bigger than your family this is a global attack Satan wants to destroy destroy Georgia but I believe what the Bible believes if there's a remnant of righteous in the city look at somebody and tell them we got a chance for survival I don't care how much demonic perverted activity takes place in the state line look at somebody and tell me as long as there's a praiser in the land y'all don't even say it in the key I said it in I said as long as there's a praiser in the land Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> sit down, sit, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, understand, understand. Logic, logic, logic will interrupt the conversation. Logic interrupts the conversation uninvited, telling you you ought to just accept things as they are. Logic will get in your mind and tell you, I don't care how you preach, prepare, pay, serve, sacrifice. It's never going to change. I need you to hear me when I tell you that logic will sometimes interrupt your faith experience and tell you you'll never have it. You'll never see it. You'll never be it. But how many of you know because I got the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of truth, it won't allow me to accept this final because because I got a feeling that something good is about to happen in my life. I need you to understand tonight when you make up in your mind that this time I'm going to trust God for real. Hear me. Trusting God will have you laying in the floor in the middle of the day with the lights out in a fetal position crying your eyes out. Uh -huh. Trusting God will have you taking pills to stay up in the day and make you think you need a nightcap at night. I know some of y'all gonna act funny because you want your neighbor to think that you're real good and safe. But all of the real folk in here who want to tell the truth, sometimes I feel like a nut and sometimes I don't. Anybody in the room ever had to sit in the driveway and get your face together so when you walked in the house, wouldn't nobody ask you what's wrong? Anybody ever wept all the way to work and had to take about a few minutes to get yourself together because people People just don't understand what you got to go through to keep on showing up because I'm so accustomed to you looking strong I don't understand the weakness that you have to battle to keep on showing up we got to stop taking for granted to people who keep on getting on our stages encouraging us in the faith like they ain't going through you do understand I know this man he he just looks like an image of strength he's always even keel 
gentle and sober seem like to me nothing ever ruffles his feathers but I need you to understand every time he stands here it's because a battle has been fought back there just because when I walk out here and I don't look like I've been through nothing don't mean I didn't have to fight my way to prayer who in the room tonight will admit I have to fight to keep my sanity I have to fight to keep on preaching I have to fight to keep on serving sometimes giving up makes more sense than holding on but I'm still here I'm almost uh, where I need to be. Please be seated. Let me preach the text, won't you? I'll be done in a few minutes. By the time we read John 21, Jesus has now been crucified, nailed to a cross, buried in a grave, resurrected on the third day. And the text says, after these things, I'm trying to find my group by the time we get to John 21 Jesus has been crucified nailed to a cross buried in a tomb and the text says after these things I'm going to try this side by the time we get to John 21 Jesus has been beat with many stripes. They beat him with a flagra, which is a cat of nine tails. It, it was a whip that had in the leather belt, it had sheep's teeth and iron glass. Uh, am I talking to anybody? And the reader said they beat him uh, uh, 39 save one uh, because there are 40 major sicknesses in the world. Uh, Jesus took 39 stripes save one. Uh, that's why you and I can get sick. But good news tonight uh, because the Bible said by his stripes it ain't Easter Sunday morning the text says by the time we read John 21 Jesus has been crucified he's been nailed to a cross buried in a tomb and the text says after these things I, I, I've done many funerals in, in my day and, and one of the culminating moments of the funeral is when you go to the graveside service and you know when you're sitting at the graveside there are these famous infamous words that the clergy always says in the introduction of his remarks to the family at the graveside he says to the family he says family now we have come as far as we can go he's announcing to you that this is the end and there will be no after this but by the time we read John 21 the text says Jesus has been crucified nailed to a cross buried in the tomb but the text says after these things I, I don't know who in the room has had the worst season of your life but God sent me here to tell you there will be an after this I wish I had the right church look at somebody and tell them I, I don't know what you've been through but the Lord told me to tell you there will be an after this I, I know you've lost more you can calculate but the Lord told me there will be an after this uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm almost there I'm almost there I'm almost there the Bible says watch this after these things Jesus manifested himself God might there are people who are surprised how you keep on showing up have you ever been that one that walked in the service and everybody was shocked to see you they were shocked to see you because they thought it was their rumor and their lie that was going to nail the coffin to your future but but because you got the grace of God on your life you keep on showing up I, I just want to pause to give you an applause because you didn't let the haters stop your desire for greater look at somebody and tell them I'm proud of how you keep on showing up time after time and sometimes it's the people that you show up for are the very ones who have orchestrated your defeat and your demise and that's how you know you've got the anointing of God on your life not because you can minister to those who love you but when you can preach to those that you know have drugged your name when you can minister to those that you know mean you're no good that's how you know you got the grace of God on your life and the text says Jesus manifested himself I wish we were in the old church because in the old church right through here if the preacher said Jesus manifested himself somebody would say come by here good Lord come by here we, we were going to say my soul is on the altar Lord come by here I'm just wondering tonight if anybody came to church to have an encounter 
with the Lord. I'm almost there now. The Bible says after these things, hear me please be seated. Uh, y'all just going to stand okay. I don't know if your feet fine. Uh, understand, it is, it is these things in the text that make trusting God so difficult. It, it is these things, these things. Look at somebody tell him, I, I don't have time to tell you, but these things, these things, I can't itemize all I've been through, but, but tell him it's these things for somebody. It's family, it's finance, it's health. Sometimes it's ministry. Sometimes it's just your mind. Uh, uh, but come on, tell somebody these things. Uh, understand something. Why are these things so significant? Because uh, it was Jesus who prophesied life yet he suffered in death it was Jesus who spoke about light yet the disciples are left in darkness do I have anybody in the room who can identify with the fact that sometimes your assignment is to give strength to others when you are weak your own self who in the room never had to encourage somebody else when you needed to be encouraged yourself and that's a terrible construct in the church uh, because I found that we don't allow strong people to have weak moments uh, because I keep on showing up uh, you just take for granted that I'm strong and I'm all right and I don't need nothing but tell your neighbor I just look like this on the outside but I got some real battles going on on the inside uh, tell them when you get time just call my name in prayer I'm almost where I need to be, I promise you. I understand something. Jesus was gone. Caesar is in power. Now it's unpopular uh-huh, to be associated with Jesus. Let me put it where you can get it. Uh, Jesus is dead and Trump is in office. I mean Caesar is in office and it is now unpopular to be associated with Jesus. Uh -huh, Jesus is dead but I still got a crazy governor and it don't, it don't look like it is popular to be associated with Christ. In other words, they're at a place now where it doesn't seem like like trusting God is working. Can I stop right here? Have you ever been to a place where it didn't seem like trusting God was working? Have you ever been to a place where it seemed like tithing was not working? Have you ever been to a place where it ever seemed like forgiveness was not working? Seemed like the more I forgive, the more they attack. And so then there was a temptation to step out of the Lord's will and handle it myself. Do me a favor and touch a neighbor one time and say, neighbor, stay in his will. Because God's about to turn some things in your favor. Understand now, the Bible declares by the time we get to verse number three, the Bible said that Simon Peter said unto them, he said, I go fishing. I'm almost where I need to be now this is amazing to me because Simon Peter says I'm going fishing and the amazing thing is the people said I go with thee now why is this amazing because this could not have been a church of God in Christ group this could have not been a Pentecostal group when, when I look at this if we look at this panoramically this could not have been charismatic people they, they must have been Methodist or Catholic or something why because this is the same Peter who had just denied Jesus at the fire. I'm getting ready to show you something. All right, all right, Life Church, I need y'all to be honest. Y'all know how we treat ex-members who mistreat the pastor? Y'all know how we treat ex-members when they mistreat the pastor. They stay gone for a couple of months and when they walk back in the building, we look them up and down and elbow and here he come. Uh, uh, text so-and-so, tell the adjutants to be on guard. We, we see him. Y'all know how we act when people leave here after having hurt your leader. They have done injury to the one who have prayed for you. We don't deal well with people who are unkind to our leaders. Neither do we forgive them and I see problem with that because you got to understand that even anointed people have bad days it was somebody who said Peter had a bad day it was Judas who had a bad heart all I'm trying to show you that after 
after Peter had denied Jesus at the fire, this church still gave him back his influence. So to the point when he said, I'm going fishing, the whole church said, we're going with you. Now this is the same Peter that denied Jesus at the fire. Look at somebody and tell them, do you love me enough to allow me to be who God has called me to be? No, I don't cross all the T's. No, I don't dot all the I's. But there's an anointing on my life. Oh God, uh, maybe, maybe that was too much. Uh, understand something. The Bible says uh, that Peter said to them, I'm, I'm going fishing. Now, now, now I'm about to preach, but I won't tell you that uh, it would appear from the onset that, that going fishing was not a bad idea. Do I have any fishermen in the room? Uh, uh, fisher ladies? Uh, fishing. Sometimes people who go fishing, they don't always just go to catch fish. They, they go to relax and they go to take their mind off of things. Uh, they go to sit in the serenity of the water and listen to the wind blow between the leaves of the trees. Uh, so it would not appear from the onset that fishing was a bad idea. After all, Jesus is gone. Caesar is in power. They got political pressure in the city of Jerusalem let me just take me a vacation I, I just need to get away look at look at some of you say yeah you know that's right I, I don't know where this sabbatical thing came from you know we like to take breaks in the kingdom oh God I'm about to mess up now we like to take breaks in the kingdom when the pressure is too great but I don't see Jesus doing that and the Bible said whenever he would take a break he would go yonder the pray only to be refilled to get back in place so he could finish the assignment of God on his life and the Bible said that Peter says I'm going fishing and again I argue that fishing is not really a bad idea except fishing represents him going back to what God called him out of because if you remember Matthew chapter 4 verse 18 and the Bible said it was by the sea of Galilee and it was Peter and his brother Andrew and Jesus said unto them come and follow me so now when they go back fishing they're not just going because fishing is a good idea but this is an example of them going back to what God had called them out of and I came to tell somebody tonight that whatever you do you can't go back to what God has called you out of who will admit tonight that there is some temptation to go back to what you know who in the room tonight will admit that I've been tempted to go back to what I know works look at somebody and say neighbor I trust God but I still know how to make a dollar out of 15 cents come on wave at your neighbor and say oh neighbor I don't have the right church in here. I'm trying to stay on the Lord's side. But I still know how to make in meat. I still got my tight skirt. I still know how to get the bills paid. Y'all quiet in here. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I'm not trusting God. Because I don't have an alternative. I'm trusting God. Because my desire is to please him. Will you wave? Wave at somebody and say, Oh, neighbor, come on and help me preach. You cannot go back. Whatever you do tonight, don't go back to what you know. You can't go back to doubting. You can't go back to darkness because I got a feeling that God's about to turn some things in your faith. Look at somebody tonight and say neighbor I felt tempted to go back. Sometimes I want to fight. Sometimes I want to go off. But I made a decision that I'm going to hold my peace. I'm going to let God fight my battle because I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Wave, wave at a neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you 
do don't you dare go back you got to stand your ground you got to be still and know I know you're tempted to throw in the towel I know you're tempted to give up on God but I came to tell somebody if you hold on a miracle is on the way the Bible declares that they got to the water and they fished all night long they worked all night long they worked overtime they worked three jobs trying to make ends meet after they got through working they did not catch anything and the Bible said they were honest about their condition cause what I like about it after they fished all night long didn't catch nothing but Jesus still showed up they served all night long didn't catch nothing but Jesus still showed up wave at a neighbor and said neighbor Jesus is on the way if you hold on help is coming deliverance is coming be not weary in well doing for in due season you gonna reap if you faint not do me a favor wave at another neighbor and said neighbor hold on to God a miracle is coming the Bible declares they fished all night and they didn't catch nothing but what I'm glad about is that Jesus showed up anyway and I prophesy to somebody tonight that Jesus is about to show up in your courtroom Jesus is about to show up in the sick room Jesus is about to show up if you give up now you'll miss his coming if you give up now you'll miss his arrival I dare somebody to make a decision I'm holding on because greater is on the way but what I like about it the Bible said they fished all night and didn't catch nothing Jesus declared when he got to the water he asked the men have ye any meat meat is substance meat is production what he's asking them how have you fared walking out of my wheel how have you fared holding back your tithe being unfaithful to God what did you catch while you were doing your thing what did you catch outside of God's will and I like the text because Peter was honest about his condition when Jesus said have you any meat Peter was honest he said Lord I didn't catch nothing I fished all night don't have no joy I got married don't have no peace got the promotion don't have no joy but here I am standing in the need look at your neighbor and say neighbor the key to your deliverance is being honest about where you are tell somebody I love the Lord but I'm frustrated I love the Lord but I'm tired I love the Lord but I'm weary but I believe that a miracle is on the way Jesus looked at the me he said Peter I need you to trust me one more time who in the room will admit tonight I'm tired I'm ready to quit I'm ready to give in but I came to tell you you can't quit because greater is upon you that's a miracle on the way to your house you can't quit you got to trust him one more time grab a neighbor of that 
vaccinated neighbor. Grab a neighbor, grab them by the hand and say, neighbor, I need you to trust him one more time. I need you to trust him one more season. I know you've been struggling. I know you've been weary, but I got a feeling that a miracle is on the way. Touch three people and say, neighbor, a miracle is on the way. Point at somebody and say, neighbor, before you put up your net, before you give up your work, I need you to trust me one more time. Tell somebody, trust it. Trust it. One more time. Wait a minute. I got to leave. But before I leave you, I got to tell you. Look what Jesus said. He said, drop your net on the other side. The people of God. It would have made sense to me. 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 Thank you, man of God. It would have made sense if Jesus told them to take your net to another river. It would have made sense if he'd have told them take your net to another lake. But in the same walk, in the same boat, the miracle was already there. I need you to tell somebody, your miracle is already there. You're one move away from the greatest season of your life. Look what he did. He said, Peter, pick up your net and drop it on the other side. Now, wait a minute. If the net got full because it was fish on this side of the boat, what that means is while they were fishing on this side of the boat, the fish were in the water the whole time. What that means is Jesus could have sent the fish under the boat on the other side, but sometimes it's not about what Jesus does. It's about what you're willing to do. And the Bible said when they dropped the net on the other side, the fish came from everywhere. I came to tell somebody, drop your net one more time. Launch your business one more time. Fill out the application one more time. That's a miracle on the way. And the Bible said, when they dropped the net on the other side. Wait a minute. Can you put the scripture back up on the screen? I need to show y'all something. The very last scripture, the one with the fish in it, gone down to the end. Follow me in the sermon. Look what the text said. When they dropped the net on the other side, the Bible declares that the net was so full of fish that they could not handle the weight of the net. That ain't the right verse. Keep on going back. Look what the Bible said. Get it in your Bible. The Bible declares when the fish got in the net, the Bible said they couldn't hold it for the fishes. Now who in the room went to English class? What you discovered is that the word fish is singular and plural by itself. The word fish don't need an S on it in order to be plural. So John must be prophesying that God's getting ready to put an S on your miracle. Look at somebody and say, Nabal, everything you ask God for, he's getting ready to multiply. He's getting ready to add an S 
on your breakthrough he's gonna add increase to your miracle I just need you to trust him one more time do me a favor wave at somebody and say neighbor whatever you do don't you give up don't you give in don't walk away because greater is on the way weeping may endure for a night but joy joy is coming in the morning if you believe it start leaping start shouting start rejoicing i decided i'm gonna truck Ask your neighbor, will you trust him? Stop it. There are seasons in your life where giving up makes more sense than holding on. I'm done preaching, but before I take my seat, can I tell you, it's one thing to fail by yourself. But the challenge for Peter is the people that went fishing with him. Can you imagine what that conversation was like by five o'clock in the morning? You know, I knew we shouldn't have trusted him. I knew we shouldn't have followed him out here. And I, I should have followed my gut. You know, we should have known he didn't have no anointing after he denied Jesus at the fire. I, that's what we get for giving him a, another chance. It's one thing to fail by yourself. But when you fail in the company of others, it's added pressure. It's in those moments that your anointing is now in question. You begin to wonder, did he really call me? Am I really assigned to this season? in those moments but isn't it good news to know that when you're at the crossroad of decision Jesus knows how to show up him writer said just when I need him most who in the room can testify tonight he showed up not only that but can I tell you after you do anything all night and it proves to be unproductive. You're tired, you got an attitude. You don't wanna to talk to nobody and you're ready to go. Jesus said, before you give in to your mood, 
trust me. One more time, watch this. I know ain't no fish in this water. Why am I dropping my net in the same water? Because you got to know there may not have been fish in there before Jesus said drop your net. Because you know he can make a way out of out of no way. I came tonight simply to tell you before you give in to circumstances the Lord told me to tell you trust him one more time. Preacher, you don't understand what kind of risk I'm taking because the way my reputation is set up, I can't, I can't handle another public failure. I can't. The people are already questioning my call. That's part of your problem. You're trying to measure up to the expectation of people. You got to know within yourself that if God called you, hallelujah to God, you got to be able to trust him. Text said, drop your net on the other side. What that means is if God tells you to sell hamburgers in the parking lot of McDonald's, don't worry about who's going to walk past you. Tell somebody, just do what he told you. Just do what he told you. I don't care if he tell you to sell hot dogs out of the trunk of your car across the street from James Coney Island. You borrow you some wieners and you you get out there and you do what he said look at somebody and tell them I need you to do what he told you see you looking at you looking at you looking at ratios you looking at probabilities but you've not factored in the sovereignty of God I'm telling you God's about to make a way out of I don't know who I'm talking to in here tonight but God told me to tell you stop playing it safe he said I can't bless you until you put everything at risk I can't bless you until you put everything at stake the Lord said I need you to trust me in such a way that the financial advisor would oppose it I want you to trust me in such a way that the lawyer would tell you that you're crazy look at somebody and tell them all I got now is to trust God and I came to tell you if you step out song says he'll never leave you He'll never leave you If you will only Trust Him Trust Him Trust If you If you will only Trust Him Oh, trust him. Trust him. Listen, I don't know who's sick tonight, but I hear this. Heal, heal your body. Yes, he will. Heal, heal your body. Somebody heal, heal your body if you would. Oh, yeah, trust, trust me if you would only 
Bible church and I believe the old saints would say it this way trust him look at somebody and tell them trust him trust him hey tell somebody trust him what oh, no, 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 no. trust him Trust him. Come on, tell him. Trust him. Trust him. Come on, tell him. Trust him. Trust him. Yeah. One more time. Trust him. Everybody, trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Hey, trust him. I need you to trust him, trust him, trust in him who will not leave you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Woo. Trust him, trust him, trust him, trust him. Come on, look down your row and tell your neighbor, I need you to trust him, I need you to trust him. Trust in him. And I need about 50 people to open up your mouth and release a shot in this room. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Trust in him, trust in him. He's gonna make it good, he's gonna make it good. If he said it, he will perform it. Oh! He will make it good, yes he will. He will make it good. You sown in tears, but get ready, get ready, get ready to reap in joy, get ready to reap in joy, get ready to reap in joy. It's reaping time, oh, oh, oh. it's reaping time, hey, it's reaping time, yeah, it's reaping time, oh, it's reaping time, yeah. It's reaping time, it's reaping time, it's reaping time, yeah, 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 it's reaping time, yeah. Oh, that's right, release that sound in this room. Oh. Come on, release the sound in this room. Trust in him, yes. Trust him, trust him, trust him. Trust him, trust him, trust him. Trust him, trust him, trust him. Uh, hope make it not a shame. Hope make it not a shame. Hope make it not a shame. He's gonna pay you for your pain. He's gonna pay you for your suffering. Uh, payday! Payday is here. Payday, payday, payday is here. Oh! Yeah! Yeah! Trust in him, he will not leave you. Trust in him, he will be there. Trust in him, he will not fail you. If you trust, you shall be well. Trust in him, 
he will not leave you. Trust in him, he will be there. Trust in him, he will not fail. Trust in him, all will be well. Well. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you're not much. She can't do the ocean. Trust in him, trust in him. You got to be delivered from public opinion. You, you got to be delivered from other folks' opinion. You, you got to do what God told you to do. Step out on faith. Trust him, this is the season. Oh, yeah. Woo, hell yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at somebody say, I'm getting my courage back. I've been a timid praiser. Scared to lose. Scared to be defeated. But I got a feeling that everything, oh, no, 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 no. It's going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Woo. This is where we used to have old church. Yeah, now my show you. Y'all depend on the musicians too much. I dare 20 people just to open up their mouth and say, Glory! 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 Yeah, y'all know my show. Glory! Woo! Let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Send your glory tonight. Send your anointing tonight. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us tonight. Renew my spirit. Restore our joy in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord. Come by here. Come by here. Breathe on me. Hey, breathe on me. You got to tell him. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Oh. Yeah. Ye na mashi ande de di osha ya. Ro katada mashi kanda bahaya. Ye na mashi kanda de di osha. O mashekaya. Restore, renew, revive. Restore, renew, revive. Restore, renew, revive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it, that's it. Hear my shit. Uh huh. You about 30 seconds away from another win. It's Oh, mama, she can go. It's a dama shayo. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're waiting on you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Feel me again. Feel me again. Restore me again. Renew me again. Oh, Lord, Lord. Yeah. 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 I will trust you. I will, I will, I will. I will trust him. I will trust him. I will trust him. I will. I will. Hey, hey, hey. Ha, yeah, 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 yeah. Yo. Ha, yeah, 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 yeah. Put your hands in this room tonight.
Some of you are going to have to admit in your prayer tonight that you've done just enough to get by. You're serving safe. But there's no risk involved. That's why you've seen no manifestation. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. You're so masterful in your church work. You, you're such an expert. Hallelujah. You know how to get it done without taking a risk. But the Lord told me to tell you, this is the season. You got to launch out into the deep. Hallelujah. You got to launch out. Do more. We like to sing the song. He's done more. I don't know. Than I ever expected. Mm -hmm. You know what the Lord told me to tell you? He said, you did just what? He said, if you want me to do more than you expect. He said, you do more than you planned. Look at somebody and say, I dare you to step out. Just look at somebody in faith and say, I dare you to take a risk for God this week. Just, just step out. Put everything in jeopardy. And watch by this time next Sunday, you'll have a testimony. Look at somebody tell them, God did it again. Oh, Whew. I got to go to my seat. I've been up here too long. Lift your hands. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. The hand of God is on your life. All that you need, He will supply. The hand of God is. The hand of God is, is, the hand of God is on your life. The hand of God is on your life. Hey, all that you need, he will supply. The hand of God is, the hand, yeah, da 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 the hand of God is on. Oh, 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 oh. The hand of God is on your side. He's on your side. Hey, hi, yeah, 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 yeah. He's on your side. I know you don't believe it. That's why I got to tell you. He's on your side. Hey. He's on your side. He's on your side. Shh. Listen. I'm done tonight. If Peter had given up after a long night of labor, he would have missed the season that would have made every other season worth it. Hear me when I tell you. God said, tell them there's a season coming in your life that's going to make every struggling season worth it. The Lord said, tell them I'm going back 10 years and I'm going to pay you for 10 years of silent suffering. You could have went off and told your story, but you held your peace. And the Lord said, by the time 22 gets here, payday is going to beat you to the new year. Look at somebody and tell him he's about to pay you. My God. Woo. Hallelujah. Stop it. Thank you, Jesus. My, 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 my. He about to pay you. Thank you, Jesus. Because you honored him in suffering. Hallelujah to God. Somebody got the revelation. Hallelujah to God. God's about to do, hallelujah. God's about to do in four months. Hallelujah. What you thought was going to take four years to accomplish. We just entered into a prophetic season. I need you to imagine yourself coming out of what you're in. Look at somebody telling, get a picture in your mind. How you gonna look when you come through here? Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. I got to sit down. 
Trust him one more time. Trusting God is not only trusting him to do something. Sometimes you have to trust him to do nothing. Do me a favor and tell your neighbor not another word. Don't you even speak on it. Don't act like it didn't happen. Just trust. Trust me. Vengeance is mine. I don't know who I'm talking to. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. But you say, Lord, if I keep quiet, I look guilty. He said, I know. He said, that you may know me in the fellowship of suffering. He said, if you suffer with me, you're going to reign with me. He said, keep your mouth closed. Don't you defend yourself. Don't vindicate yourself. Let them think what they want to think because I'm going to get the glory. I don't know who I'm helping tonight, but I just want to obey God. And the Lord told me to tell you to hold your peace. Let him fight your battle. Don't you say one word. Matter of fact, the Lord said, cancel the meeting. There will be no phone call. Send another text and say, never mind. God's got it under control. I don't know who I'm talking to in here, but the Lord said, tell you, everything is going according to plan. I, I know some stuff fell out of sorts on the way, but the Lord said, everything is going according to plan. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. See, you don't really know trust until you're tired and frustrated. Mm -hmm. And I know you're tired, but the Lord said, trust me. He said, trust me to be silent. I don't know why I'm hanging up right here, but the Lord said, trust me to be silent. Trust me to be silent. And watch I raise you up for such a time as this. Text says he trusted Jesus again, dropped his net in the same water, using the same boat, but he ended up with more fish than he can handle. Will you do me a favor and tell your neighbor, God's going to replace everything you lost he said, but it'll be more than you've ever had in your life. The Lord said, tell you, it wasn't really a loss. It was him making room for new. He said, some people had to walk out of your life. He said, and you wasting your time trying to get them back. He said, let them stay where they are. As I'm getting ready to send people into your life that are only assigned to strengthen you and don't want nothing in return. I heard the Lord say, tell them, I'm getting ready to send you silent partners. When you're in business, you know what a silent partner is. A silent partner is a person that come with a check but don't need to be acknowledged. I ain't got to put my name on nothing. Hallelujah to God. I'm just here to write checks. I hear the Holy Ghost say to tell somebody, check writers are on the way. I'm in the Holy Ghost. I guess I ain't got the right church. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Lord said, tell you, check writers are on the way. You discouraged because you got the vision, but you don't have the pro. Vision. The Lord said, because I gave you the vision, check writers are assigned to you. Don't make no deal with the devil. Stand still and see. He said, because when it happens, all of Georgia going to know, had it not been for the Lord on your side. Hallelujah. You got to trust him. I'm telling you, coming to church is a waste of your time if you're not going to trust him. No matter how you shout and dance, if you're not going to trust him, you may as well have went bowling. It's a waste of your time if you're not going to trust him. Some of us in here tonight, you got to trust him because there are people depending on you to trust him because their harvest is connected 
to yours. I would have given up a long time ago until I realized how many people were depending on me to make it. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. How many of you will admit if it wasn't for my children, if if it wasn't for my family, I would have just walked away and went somewhere. Look at somebody, tell them I got to hold on. Because I got young and unborn that's depending on me to make it. Hallelujah. I promise you I'm closer to my seat than I was five minutes ago. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. Trust him. I challenge you tonight. Play softly and worshipfully. Whatever song you desire, just play something that we can worship to. The Lord says, trust me. I know you're tired. I know you're frustrated. But drop your net over here. Can I tell you something else? Peter was a professional fisherman. And you know, when you're a pro at something, you're not good at taking instructions. Because Jesus wasn't a fisherman. He was a carpenter. But you got to be so open that God will send somebody into your life that don't do what you do but give you an instruction for what you do. I love it. Look at somebody say, you got to be open. You got to be open. He'll send a raven. If he'll send a raven to feed the prophet, I realized the miracle, the raven is an untamed bird. The revelation is God said, I'm going to take wild things and make them serve you. But you got to trust him. You got to trust him to forgive. You got to trust him to be silent. You got to trust him to launch out into the deep. The window is open. Now is the time. I challenge you tonight to get a seed of trust in your hand. Tonight, I don't give an offering. For those of you who are online with us, you say, preacher, I'm I'm playing it safe because the truth of the matter is I'm too afraid to fail again. My reputation is at stake. That's your problem. You got to be of no reputation. No matter what people think about you, if you trust God and walk by faith, God knows how to dig a well in a desert place. He can make a way out of no way. Get a seed in your hand tonight. I believe there are at least eight of us in the room who really need to trust God in this season. I believe I said it this morning, this pandemic has proven the uncertainty of times. You can be degreed and still be out of work because these times are uncertain. The song said time is filled with swift transition. You can be on the mountain today, be in the valley by morning. Hallelujah. But Hebrews 4, 9 says, there remains a place of rest for the people of God. I don't care what's going on in the world. There remains a place of rest. I believe there are eight of us in the room tonight who will lay a foundation of trust tonight with a hundred dollar seed if you have it I challenge you to trust God with it only you know for those of you online with us the giving option should be before you cash app text to give it's it's there choose an option and join us in this faith moment but I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring but I know you hold tomorrow in the hollow of your hand Only a person tonight that feels a burden, an unction, feels compelled to partner in this sowing moment. Just to begin standing to your feet all over the building. Don't, don't be afraid to be first. I want you to move as quickly as you expect your miracle to move. You've heard a word tonight that has shifted your heart and your mind. Caused you to believe that all is not lost. Although I failed in the past, I feel victory in my future. Sometimes God has to trust you with a closed door before he can bless you with an open door. He wants to make sure you're not going to pout and quit. He wants to make sure that you can stand firm. 
every sower tonight. Gather your faith. Oh, no, no, no. We worship you, our, our Lord. You are worthy to be. Gather your seed tonight. There's at least eight of us tonight that can do that. I believe I see more. And I want everybody else in the room, whether you're in the room or online, I want you to get a $50 seed or just get as close to it as you possibly can. Because I don't want to spend a lot of time challenging you for numbers. I want to spend my time challenging your faith to respond. Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm pulling this out of my savings because I was preparing for something, but I'm going to trust you. This money was earmarked for something else, but I'm going I'm to trust you tonight. Because something the man of God said challenged me to trust you again. On every believer, get your seat in your hand and just begin to rest on your feet. I'm, I'm about to let you go, but I, I want you to stand on your feet just as identification of partnership and participation I'm sowing tonight somebody saying I'm sowing tonight not because I have it I'm sowing tonight because I trust him Hiya. I'm sowing tonight not just because I got it available I'm sowing tonight because I've got to trust him oh As the servants come down the aisle, I want you to begin sowing your seed. Begin releasing your seed, everybody. Don't hide. Don't send it. Try to get to the edge of the pew and release your seed. And when you release it tonight, just say, Lord, here I am trusting you again. For those of you who are sowing electronically, just wave your device in the air. Lord, here I am trusting you again. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know when you're going to do it. But I believe you are worthy to be praised. Every giver begin to sow tonight. We give you all, all the glory. Oh, we worship you, our Lord. That's it. Begin to send your seed tonight. Begin to send your seed, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you for the people of God who release seed tonight. Some are trusting you by faith, while others are sowing out of abundance. But I ask you tonight, cause the winds of increase to blow in that direction. Cause favor to find them tonight in the name of Jesus. God, honor their faith. Reward their sacrifice. In the name of Jesus, according to Ezekiel 44 and 30, I command a blessing to rest on their homes tonight. I cancel struggle and lack. I cancel famine in the name of Jesus. But I speak increase and overflow. I command the winds of favor to blow in that direction. In Jesus' name, we give, we give. take my seat I would not assume that everybody in this room and everybody online has a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ maybe you heard about the meeting and just decided to stop by 
while the word was going forth, while prayer was being made, while worship was being offered, you made a decision. I need to give my life to Jesus Christ. You heard the call. He said, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. If you're in this room tonight and you've decided to make Jesus your choice, just step into one of these aisles and identify yourself tonight and say, preacher, I can't leave here the same way I came. Maybe you're in the virtual audience tonight and while you sit in the living room, in the kitchen, on the porch, and you've heard the word and decided, I need to put my hand in the Lord's hand. I challenge you to get in the comments and just tell somebody, I want to be saved. I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. I want you to know he's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. Same thing he does in here. He can do it right where you are. I just need you to trust him. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this moment of decision. Thank you now, Lord, for your word that has gone out. I pray now, God, that a seed has been sown into the hearts of men. And you, oh God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, will cause increase to come in Jesus' name. And we give you praise and we give you glory. Let everybody say amen. Clap your hands all over the room. Do me a favor. Let's receive our leader tonight as he comes back to us. Come on, let's thank God for the preacher on tonight. Come on, let's bless God for the preacher on tonight. How did God use him in this, in this place? We give God praise for what he has released. And we pray that God will give back to him everything that he has poured out to us. That even in his area of need, that God will meet every need in his life his strength be restored the virtue be restored in the name of Jesus and we thank you if you've given your life to the Lord you who are visiting and you who are online and been worshiping with us tonight if you said yes to Jesus if you gave him an invitation to come into your life I want to encourage you you who are online there's a link that should be in the comments section if you would just click on that link and complete the information that's asked of you. Someone wants to be in touch with you. Someone wants to encourage you. Someone wants to, amen, give you tools that you'll need as you move in this relationship with the Lord. We congratulate you on the very best decision that you could ever make is receiving Jesus as your, as your Savior. And we would love to have you as a part of this ministry, regardless of where you live, what city or state. You can become a part of the Life Church. And that information is also in the comment section. And you can just click on that link and complete that information. And someone will be in touch with you, welcoming you to Life Church. Life is a place that you can grow. Life is a place where your life can get better. We know because we get better here at the Life Church. You may be in the house tonight without a church home. You may not have a pastor. You may not have a local body that you are a part of. I want to encourage you. This is the time to be connected. This is not the time to be disconnected. You need to be connected to somebody else. You need to be connected to somebody, amen, who's got faith in your God. This is not the time to be an island. But we need one another. We strengthen one another. Being a part of a ministry is not just about putting your name on the roll. Understand that somebody needs what you, someone needs what you have and, and you need what somebody else has. And so you cheat yourself and you cheat someone else when you stand alone. So I want to encourage you tonight, even if it's not this church, amen, because as good as this church is, I'm honest enough to know that this is not the only good church. But you need to be in a good church, not just a church, but in a good church. And if you're here tonight, you're not a part of a ministry and you want to come and become a part of the Life Church, again, we'd love to have you here. I'd love to be your pastor. And even in this moment, the doors of the church are open. If you're here tonight and you want to come and unite your life to the Life Church, yes, entrust your life to life and get better here. If there's one tonight, if there's one if there's one tonight. Come on, we put our hands together when we give God glory. 
We're getting ready. We're getting ready to go. We're getting ready for a very eventful month. This is our Back to Church month all September. Uh, we've got back to church activities as we are encouraging people to become reconnected to the church, even if it's not in person online, but be, become reconnected to church. And so all month long, we've got activities planned and beginning next Sunday, next weekend, this coming weekend is, amen, our women's weekend. Yes. Yes, the women will be in charge this weekend, and we're going to be right here supporting and cheering them on. Uh, one of the late bishops said, when the women leave, guess what, brethren? Fare you well. I'm going right with them. And let the record show, if they leave, mother, I'm marching out right with y'all. Amen. Right with you. And so we want to support the women. We want to support the women. Brethren, we want to support them because the very next weekend is men's weekend. <laughs> men's weekend. And we've got activities planned. We've got a barbecue cook-off. Yes. And these men aren't playing. I think the winner gets $1,000. Yes, there's a barbecue eight-man contest, and the winner is going home with $1,000. That's how serious the brothers are. I'm not going to get in, but I'm going to eat some. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm going to eat some. And so all next weekend, we're going, we're going to Top Golf, and we're coming in on Sunday. And uh, just to know, it's, you say, oh, the men just, they're not doing nothing spiritual. They're just having fun. No, we catching fish. Bible said, he that wins souls must be wise. And there's some brothers who think they're going to be barbecuing, and they don't know we just getting their hearts ready because they can't win unless they come here on Sunday in church with us. And it's called amen, using wisdom. Amen. Sometimes you got to do those things, especially in this day sometime to get the brothers to come. But amen, we're believing God that God's going to give us a harvest. How about that? That very next Sunday is family and friends. That's the third weekend in, in September. That's family and friends day. That's the annual back to church Sunday, third Sunday in September. And we're, amen, going to have our family and friends day. It's going to be a tremendous day of worship. Then we're going outside, going to be food trucks and all kind of fun and activities outside. We're just going to fellowship after we worship together. And then at the end of the month, we're closing out that fourth Sunday with college and young adult Sunday. Amen. Our young people are going to lead out on that Sunday. It's going to be a tremendous month of ministry, and we're looking forward to what God is going to do. And we encourage you, amen, to come back and worship with us any service, any Sunday, all Sundays. We'd be grateful and glad to have you. Even as we're closing, this is a special Sunday, a fifth Sunday of every month. Uh, we, amen, this is a church that not only is blessed by the members, but this is a church where we try to bless our members. And on the fifth Sunday night of our fifth Sunday, this is the first night service we've had in over a year, we bless one of our members with $1,000. I need all of my social media workers that are scattered in here. I need somebody on YouTube. I need somebody on Facebook, because if I call the name and they're not in the building, uh, they need to be online, and we're only going to give them a few seconds to say, I'm here, because if they're not here, that means somebody else's name get pulled. Somebody's going home. One thousand, one thousand dollars. Social media, are we set on YouTube? Are we set on Facebook? I don't want anybody to say, Pastor didn't give us any time. I was here. That means I'm going to be out of $2,000 tonight. God bless you, somebody. Who is that person? Who is that person? Who is? I hear somebody say, come on. I believe that means, come on, pick my name. I believe that's what that means. The interpretation is, pick my name, pick my name. Yes, here it is. And the winner tonight is 
Brother Maurice Roberts. He's got to be online. Come on. Come on. We bless the Lord. We're giving him a few moments. Brother Maurice Roberts. Is he on? I want somebody to text him, go in his inbox and say, Brother Maurice, you missed the wrong service. You missed the wrong service. Come on, come on. Y'all pray with this. Pray with this. I'm giving him, I'm giving him, amen, about a minute, and we go into the next person. Brother Maurice. Brother Maurice, they, they said, next, next, Pastor, next. Next. The saints are not long suffering. The saints are not long. The saints are not long suffering. The, the saints don't suffer long. Shantavia, they don't suffer long. They don't have. Praise the Lord. They say, go on, go. I'm trying to be long suffering. I'm giving him till the clock goes to the next, the next minute. Hallelujah. I got the pastor, Brother Maurice, after this is over with. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Brother Maurice, the saints say, move on, move on, move on, move on, move on. Well, Brother Maurice, we tried. Now, who? somebody go in his inbox. Go in his inbox right now. Tell him you missed the wrong service. You missed the wrong service. You missed the wrong service. You missed the wrong. I told you the service you miss will be the what? One you need. And the winner, because Brother Maurice wasn't here. Brother Jeremy Johnson, is he back there tonight? Oh, 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 where, where? Where, where, bro, Brian? I need him to go into one of those moans for me. Oh, my brother Jeremy, brother Jeremy. He's so faithful, and this is the wrong service for him to miss. Y'all, he's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. His timing is bad, but he's faithful. He's faithful, but he got bad timing. Oh, my. Lord, they're in the back. They're texting him. I see him. I see him. I see his fellow workers are texting him. He's in our media minister. They texted him and said, Brother Jeremy, 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 wherever you are, Brother Jeremy, but Jeremy, Brother Jeremy, get your, get your computer on. Get your computer on. And the next, the next one, 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 the next one. She's here. Sister Melinda Sampson. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't have to be number one. God, we're standing all over the house. We're, we're going home. I said you don't have to be number one. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't even have to be next. Let that speak to your week. Let that speak to your week. Let that speak to your week. Somebody's in front of me, Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, it don't even matter. I don't care where you are in the line. If it's for you, it don't even. It don't even. Don't even. Don't even matter. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Favor of God will find you. The favor of God will make room for you. I'm speaking over your week. I'm speaking over your life. I'm speaking over your endeavors. That favor makes the difference. 
And when favor is on your life, even if it's in a pit, it'll find you. Favor will pull you out of a prison. Favor will move you from the prison to the Pharaoh. Favor will fill your mouth with answers. Favor will give you wisdom that's needed. Favor will set you apart. Favor won't let you just be one of everybody. But favor will make you stand out. I'm talking as I'm, I'm blessing your week. I'm blessing your life. Favor, Lord, Lord, there's so many. There's so, I'm just one among many. But hear me, even as you're leaving tonight, the favor of God on your life will make you stand out. The favor of God will cause you, amen, to stand out. And we give God praise and we give him glory. For even this new week that we enter into, that favor has already gone before us. And we thank you that when we get there, favor will have already been there. And we thank you for what favor has already produced for us. We walk into the blessing. We walk into opportunity. We walk into yes. We thank him that favor turns hearts in our direction. That favor gives us a yes where a yes is needed. Favor changes minds. May favor makes those be attracted to us that we need. Favor causes them to use their power, their resources, and their influence to our advantage. And for that, we thank him for favor for this week. More than enough favor. I said more than enough favor. More than enough favor. Exceeding an abundant favor for you this week. In Jesus' name, and we give him glory. Amen. God bless you. Have a tremendous week. God bless you.